Hi everyone, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Mini GPT-4, a recent model called as Mini GPT-4. So before I talk about what is Mini GPT-4, let's first see what Mini GPT-4 can do. Uh, it can basically take an image and also a question, what is the issue with my plant? What new, what should I do now? And essentially come up with this nice message that seems like there is some disease and you can do these, these, these things, right? Identifies problems, right? Discovers unusual content. So you can say, describe this image and it basically says it's cactus in the middle of a frozen lake and it's not usual to happen in the real world, right? It can also uh, do other kinds of things like uh, design product ads. So given these new mugs, design a product ad, it can nicely say that, hey, these mugs are perfect for coffee lovers and cat enthusiasts and blah, 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 coming up with a really nice, nice ad. It can take uh, images of food uh, items and then uh, come up with a food recipe generation. So it sort of nicely tells you how much of everything you will need and uh, what are the steps to follow to make something like that. It can take uh, um, handwritten text and uh, come up with a website code so as to uh, you know nicely render um, it as an HTML and a JavaScript combination. So that's the code and that's the visualization uh, if you want to create that website. It can also create rhymes. So it can take an image and then say, write a beautiful poem about this image. And uh, that nicely comes up with this, this, these, these, uh, uh, you know, send these lines uh, of awesome poem, right? Relevant to the image. It can also identify individuals. So of course, this is a very, very interesting clip, but it, it can nicely identify that this is Elon Musk um, and uh, talk a little bit about Elon Musk. So, so that's that. Uh, well, it can do more things. For example, it can take an image and then describe deep details. If you look at uh, a competitor, other model called Blip, it just gives you small little details. Uh, I mean, it just says people walking and riding motorcycles. But if you look at uh, this stuff here, it comes up with nice, interesting things like busy city streets, several motorcycles, people walking down the road. Motorcycles are parked on the side of the road and buildings on either side of the street with ornate facades and balconies. The street is paved with cobblestones and so on. Very, very interesting details. It can also, of course, explain humor in the memes. So explain why this is funny and then, you know, it's just Monday and so on. Yeah. So uh, what, what all it can do? Well, it can also come up with this, uh, uh, you know, given this image, give me a short introduction to this movie. So of course it understands that it is Godfather and then it comes up with a very nice introduction uh, or a short uh, description about the Godfather movie. It can take these uh, uh, not so real images or uncommon images and then, uh, you know, if you ask it to describe the image, it nicely says that it's about a wolf and a lamb sitting next to each other on a grass. And is it common? Well, it's not common to happen in the real world. Uh, also, you can give images of this kind and ask it, hey, how do I fix it? And it tells you several reasons why this is a problem uh, or the why this problem happened and how to fix it. Yeah. More things. Well, it can actually take images and write a story about that. So imagine writing storybooks automatically. It can take comics and then it can actually tell you who these people are. Or it can take an image and come up with a master rock rap song, which sort of rhymes very well based on this image. Okay. And by the way, it is a very good job. It comes up with verses and then, uh, you know, nice structure to the rap song as well. So how is this particular model trained, right? I mean, you saw some sort of magic uh, given images, uh, do so many interesting multimodal tasks. How is this mini GPT-4 trained, okay? And it's called mini GPT-4 because, well, the big, big GPT-4, the multimodal GPT-4 can also do this, but uh, this is a smaller version of the same model openly available for you to tweak, okay? So it basically makes use of the same instruction tuning paradigm, uh, but, but does it in a multimodal manner. So it uh, uh, so it, as you as you notice it basically contains uh, uh, a visual encoder which is comprising of QFormer and VIT model, uh, which is more or less the thing that even the Blip model uses, and it combines it with the Vicuna LLM, which is basically uh, uh, tuned from Llama itself, right? So uh, and then it basically says that hey, let me give a, a prompt uh, look like human, and then you know give an image description after projecting it from a, using a linear layer, and then essentially also giving the remaining part of the prompt. What do you think of the logo design? And then you know this logo design is the is the logo that is provided to the as the as the image to the visual encoder, and then it comes up with this output. Okay, now uh, so that's the structure, that's the architecture of Mini GPT four. It sort of aligns a frozen, you know, it's a frozen visual encoder 
along with the frozen LLM using one projection layer, one projection linear layer. Okay. So how's it trained? Well, it's trained in two steps. The first stage is pre-training, which I'll describe on this slide, and the second stage is fine-tuning, which I'll describe on the next slide. So uh, while pre-training, you basically ensure that your uh, um, that your uh, uh, you know the the visual encoder and the LLM are frozen. So visual encoder and LLM are frozen. You just do 20k steps using a batch size of 256 on four 800 GPUs. These 20k steps take about 10 hours. That's it. Okay. Uh, and what do you pre-train on? Well, you pre-train on image captioning data. So you use a combination uh, of image captioning data sets, three diff different data sets that they took, Lion data set, Conceptual Captions data set, and SBU data set. These popular three data sets in the image captioning world, they take them, uh, you know, uh, run them for 10 hours on four 800 GPUs, and you, your pre-training is done. So you would assume that this pre-trained model is really good at doing multimodal tasks, but that's not so. So it cannot really do robust visual conversations. It cannot do conversations. You know, uh, chatbot for chatbots, it's not good. And therefore, uh, or rather, why is it not good? Well, it produces incoherent outputs like repetitive words, sentences, fragmented sentences, irrelevant content, and so on. Yeah. So therefore, what they do is to fine-tune this model in a conversation way, instruction fine-tuning, as you may say. So to fine tune, you need um, you know uh, chat body fine tuning data. So how do they generate that? Well, the way they generate that is by starting from 5,000 conceptual captions images. Use the stage one model to generate comprehensive image descriptions. So using this prompt, so you basically tell the stage one model, which I just talked about on the previous slide. You tell it that hey, uh, you know, given this image with the image features, describe it in detail, give as many details as possible, and generate some output. If the output is less than 80 tokens, it's not descriptive enough. You know, you want longer outputs, you can just uh, prompt it further by saying, uh, you know, uh, continue, and then assistant continues to generate more things. Okay. Now, after this uh, stage one model has generated stuff, it's still incoherent at this stage. And therefore, what you do is to further refine it using chat GPT. So you use chat GPT with the prompt mentioned in the paper to mend the descriptions further. And lastly, to make sure that the quality of this data set, fine tuning data is really good, they manually verify the quality. Uh, uh, you know, leading to a uh, final 3,500 sized detailed image description data set. Yeah. Now, this is such a small data set, you see. Uh, so, they use this small data set for fine tuning using a very simple prompt, human, uh, and then the image. So, you know, human, the image, and the image features that are extracted using QFormer and VIT, and then the instruction. Now, the instruction could be uh, any of these simple sentences, describe this image in detail, or could you describe the contents of this image for me, or what do you think of this image, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, this fine-tuning step really takes just about seven minutes on one A100, so only seven minutes on an A100 machine, Okay. and that's how basically you get an awesome fine-tuned model. Okay. Now, lastly, how does the mini GPT-4 perform? So we, of course, looked at several uh, case studies in the beginning, but then how does it perform more quantitatively? Okay. So to verify how does it perform quantitatively, they compare it with another good multimodal, uh, you know, generation model called as uh, multimodal, uh, you know, a text generation model called as Blip2, right? Uh, and uh, they try to figure out how well it performs compared to Blip2 uh, across several advanced capabilities like meme interpretations, so explain why this meme is funny, or recipe generation, how should I make something like this, ad creation, help me draft a professional ad for this, or poem composition, how can uh, can you craft a beautiful poem about this image, right? So uh, they also tested it uh, on image captioning data, right? So and here are the results. So out of the 25 uh, examples that they tested for, you know, that they used for each of those tests, you find that uh, Blip2 really performs poorly compared to MiniGPT4. Out of the overall 100, MiniGPT4 scores 65. Uh, you know, well, the scoring is also done by GPT4. They take the outputs and ask GPT4, what do you think about those outputs? Are they good enough? Which one is better? And so on. Okay, so. They find mini GPT-4 fares reasonably well, but Blip2 is really, really poor, right? Compared to uh, on, on image captioning data also, you find that in general, mini GPT-4 is correct 66.2% times on a large data set of 5,000 images, but Blip2 is not so good. Yeah. But mini GPT-4 is not always great, so it can lead to hallucinations, and it can also lead to spatial information understanding problems. So, for example, if you look at this image, it basically says that there are the tables are covered in white tablecloth. Now, there is no white tablecloth around here. Similarly, are the windows on the left side of the photo? Yes, the windows are, but the windows are not on the left side of the photo at all. Okay, so therefore, it lacks these the, uh, the spatial understanding. Uh, uh, yeah, good, good spatial understanding, and it can hallucinate as well. In fact, they also tested hallucination across uh, these Blip2 and Mini GPT4 models. 
mini GPT-4 they tested for describing in short and describing in detail, right? And what you observe is that yes, mini GPT-4 is notorious at having higher hallucination rates, uh, especially when you ask it to generate longer captions. Okay, so that's that. Uh, mini GPT-4 in summary is a multimodal instruction fine-tuned model. Uh, it comprises the architecture is very simple, frozen visual encoder uh, with a frozen advanced uh, large language model, Vicuna in this specific case, and a projection layer. It is trained uh, in uh, uh, 10 hours on four 800 GPUs, so 10 hours for pre-training, about seven minutes for fine-tuning. That's it, right? Uh, it can do very awesome tasks uh, like image description generation, website creation, writing stories, explaining funny memes, writing poems, cooking recipes, and so on. If you want to play around with mini GPT-4, that's the link. Thank you for watching. Hope you liked the video. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my search on my homepage. Thank you.